know all the questions you ask the internet because you're too scared to say them out loud? Well, it's time to stop being afraid and start talking. Relationships, college, jobs, celebrities, social issues, and sex. Then we'll get into the taboo stuff. The Chelsea Cross Show, a fresh take on talk. Hey guys, it's Chelsea. I'm at the studio right now getting ready for the Chelsea Cross Show. I'm super excited. We have a lot to prepare. Mm. Ah. Hey guys, don't worry. That was a staged assault. But every two minutes, someone is sexually assaulted in the United States. Just this week, three women that were abducted over 10 years ago were found alive, and we're so happy that they're back with their families. Would you know what to do if you were approached by an attacker? I certainly would not have until Tracy and Charlie Vega taught me. That was Charlie in the video, and he's here now with his wife, Tracy. They are the founders of Simple Self-Defense for Women. They specialize in self-defense for women from ages 9 to 91, with a focus on how to simply escape an attack, not stay and fight. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you. I think it's so important to empower young women with the knowledge of how to escape an attacker. Absolutely. And you proud yourself on not fighting back, but escaping. And what is the difference? The huge difference, basically, is you can't teach somebody how to fight in a short amount of time. It takes years to be a proficient fighter, and most women don't want to be a proficient fighter. So the best really approach is to avoid and then to escape. And that's what we teach. You know, and I think so many young women, well, 9 to 91, it doesn't matter what age you are, are nervous about their size. I mean, me, I, I think that I'm smaller, especially standing next to you. And you're in heels. And I'm in heels, yeah. and yeah. I, I would think that I have no chance. But that's not the case. Nope, we're teaching you how to escape. We're teaching all of them. And it has nothing to do with physical strength. So we're going to show you guys some great stuff. And I heard that my size is actually like the perfect size. <laughs> of course you're perfect size. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to escape. But what makes me a good size? You're petite. Mm -hmm. You're very petite. So when we're talking about people who might be afraid that they're not going to be able to get away, when they look at somebody like you who's petite, they know that they can do it. If you can do it, they can do it. Absolutely. So yeah. let's demonstrate what move you taught me in the parking lot sure. and show people how to escape that attacker. Okay. Sure. So what I do is I put my hand around you like this, and I'm going to grab you. And the, the rule is you grab one finger and you peel the finger. So whenever you see a finger, you peel it and bend it back. Right. And in this case, to make me go down, point it towards my nose and just go keep it. Keep oh. Going. And of course, I run the opposite direction. Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. And I really could take you down. Absolutely. Did. You yeah. know what happens, Chelsea? When you're doing it really fast and your adrenaline is going, you're going to snap that person's finger and they're going to hit the ground in so much pain, you're going to be able to take off. And one finger does the trick. One absolutely. finger does the trick. And what it does is it basically gives you time to get away. And that's what we're teaching, creating right. time to escape. Time right. and distance. Now, I always am conscious, uh, you know, of course, like I was, you know, videoing myself with headphones, but what are some of the things that we do on a daily basis? We're walking down the street and we're not necessarily aware of our surroundings. Well, but you're doing just that. You're on your phone looking down, you have your headset in your ears, and my gosh, we're passing people all the time that are walking and looking. It's like, pay attention, that's safety 101. You've got to be aware of your surroundings. So important, especially if you're in a bustling city and there's yep. people all around. Now, I know that I've been in certain situations where I am walking down the street and I kind of see someone out of the corner of my eye and I get a little little nervous and I start walking faster and if you think that they're going to be that atta attacker how do you prevent the attack from happening well the first thing is the r another rule is basically you have to keep your distance and not let anybody get into your personal space and we define personal space as anywhere between seven and ten feet away because that attacker wants to get close so they can have an advantage and overpower you and right. that's what you don't want you want to keep distance so the rule is do not let anybody get into your personal space. And the way we do that basically is you put your hand put up. Put your hand up. So if you were coming towards me, and, and, and this is even women coming and attacking women. If you were coming towards me and I didn't feel comfortable with you approaching me, I'd say, excuse me, can I help you? And you notice you're trying to look around my hand, and that's kind of the idea because I want to intimidate you right. so you can't see me because now you know I'm not an easy target because and I'm paying attention. Your eyes immediately go up 
when that person knows that you're not an easy target. So right away, you, you've improved your odds. The second thing it does is think about when she has her hand up, if there's somebody in the parking lot right. yep. and they see that, even if they didn't hear what she said, it's the universal language that says, hey, there's a potential problem. Most everybody has a cell phone. They'll call 911 We know they say, all have a cell phone because they're all doing this. So right. now right. that they've seen that happen, they can call. They may not get it involved. It alerts the people in the public area, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. So important. And yep. you have so many great tips. Thank you both so you much. Know. Tracy and Charlie are actually going to be back later in the show to teach us more self-defense moves in any situation. But up next, we're going to take a closer look at how sexual assault affects its victims. We'll be right back. talking about rape and sexual assault and how to protect yourself. With me now is Kristen Briggs. She's a licensed psychologist that has been working with trauma victims for over 10 years. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me, Chelsea. You know, I think a lot of us are not well informed on the proper definition of rape. What is the legal definition of rape? The legal definition of rape addresses the penetration, however subtle, of any orifice of the body, whether that's anally, vaginally, orally, with any part of another person's body or an object. And now, what is, you know, what are some of the terms that we associate rape with? I think for me, and with, amongst the millennial generation, we hear the term date rape a lot. What is the difference between date rape and rape? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that. There's, there's really a very large misconception mm -hmm. that um, you know rape is about the forcible rape or the aggressive rape by a stranger in an alley. And the reality is that what we know and, and what our research shows us is that the large majority, anywhere from 85 to 94 percent of rapes are occurring with either intimate partners or people that somebody knows, an acquaintance. Well, that's a statistic that really blows my mind, is that a lot of the time, sexual assaults are happened and the person knows their attacker. Right. Why is that? Why is it? Um, well, because rape really isn't about um, libido or about sex, it's about power and control. And so um, people are, are taking something and, and very often, um, a, a rape can take up to two hours, mm -hmm. and that's not the actual act, the physical act. That's sort of isolating somebody, setting up the stage, the coercion, the intimidation, the humiliation, and then um, you know, leading up to a position where somebody's in a, a position of compliance, mm. and then the rape occurs. And sometimes people ask, "Why didn't you fight? Where you know, where's the sign of a struggle?" And this is about sort of this. Um, we learn in, in biology classes about fight or flight. Right. We often don't hear about the third automatic body response, which is freeze. So when people are in a position where they feel threatened or they're um, under attack, a freeze response is very natural. Mm -hmm. And that fight or flight mechanism really comes on strong. I mean, I know in my opening package, Charlie had taught me the move. Right. And so I was prepared when he put his hand on top of my mouth. And the first time we did it, I froze. I actually didn't know what to do and I had just been taught. So I understand how that could really be scary for someone in an actual situation. And Chelsea, it's automatic. There's, there's no choice here. This is, this is happening in nanoseconds from the brain to the body. And you know, you hear the, the, the saying deer in headlights, or if you in picture like an impala when a lion's after it and it's that freeze right. response. So you talk about that two hour grooming period. Are there certain signs that we could look out for or recognize to possibly indicate that this may be a scary situation before it happens? Yeah, I think um, you know my kind of instinctual answer to that is listen to your gut instincts, mm -hmm. right? So I know that Charlie and his team will talk more about ways to stay safe, but listen to your gut instincts. If something feels kind of off or creepy, it is. And on the flip of that, if something feels too good to be true. So if you think of vulnerable freshmen at college, um, you know that that period of time that is highest risk mm -hmm. is sort of that first six month period right. on a college they campus. They call that the red zone. Right, and it makes so much sense because what change management theory shows us is that change takes up to six months to adjust. Mm -hmm. Vulnerable, it's new, and so there's this period of time where um, if, if something feels too good, you're getting invited to parties by seniors, they're offering you drinks. 
um, you know, listen to your gut instincts about that. Right, and you also provided so many great resources that are on ChelseaCross.com, and thank you for doing that. And when we come back, we're going to talk to an incredible 18-year-old woman who was sexually assaulted and is using her story to empower others to speak up. At the age of 16, Killian was a victim of sexual assault, but she decided not to let that define her and that she would use her experience to empower other victims. Today, she is attending college, she is a marathon runner, is studying to get her health coach certification, and this summer is going on a mission trip to Uganda for children's education, and she's here with us right now. I'm so happy you're here. Thank you so much for having me. I fell in love with Killian through our health coach certification at IIN, and her story just really amazed me because you're such an inspiring young woman who really had went through a hard time but you would never know you know going back to that night after when you woke up the next day what was the first thing that went through your head the first thing that I think hit me was that I've always been the kind of person to you know one foot in front of the other and that I had to keep doing what I've been doing all along and that's just to you know make it through and keep going just keep going. And you know, I, I always think, who's that first person that I would turn to? And so how did you seek help right away? Who was that first person you confided in? The first person that I had ever um, confided in was my best friend. And she um, couldn't believe it when I told her. And it definitely took her a little bit of time um, to let it sink in, as I did also. I didn't say anything to anyone for months and months and um, running was really my savior and my best friend and that was the only thing that would help. I, I probably so, release the pain so easily. Absolutely. So when you, months and months later when you finally told your parents and you decided to go to the authorities, what happened next? After that um, it was very you know you think that they would help and you think that they are only on your side and only there for your support and um, I realized after a little bit of time that I was it took over way too much of my life and um, I decided to actually drop any investigation any look into who um, you know did this and I it was taking way too much time out of my life and I realized that this is doing more harm than good now, Kristen, I mean, is that something that you hear regularly or more often that you would think that going to the authorities would help you, but in return it makes you more frustrated? Yeah, I think there's a, a couple of really key points here, and, and number one is um, that the large majority of people do not disclose right away for mm -hmm. a number of different reasons, whether that's embarrassment, shame, not really even knowing that a rape has occurred. Um, or feeling like people are going to respond to them a certain way and then yes once a disclosure has been made often feeling like the focus from law enforcement is um, on something that they may or may not have done and ends up feeling re-victimizing. And you know what is that what's that process with yourself that you have to go through because you have to process what had happened not necessarily talking about it with other people but how did you cope with your own being? Day-to-day um, -day basis, I mean, I guess the first couple of weeks I really woke up and I, you know, you take a deep breath and you say this is what it is and that's what happened and you really, the negative light has to go away at some point in time and um, I was lucky enough, you know, I have great family and great friends who were definitely really supportive and without even knowing it. Um, I'm not one to show a sign of struggle at all. so any time that there was any sense of it, um, it really, I had amazing people there to pick me back up. You know, and I think having that support system is so key. And also you have so many incredible other adventures going on in your life right now yes. that take away <laughs> from what had happened in the past. Absolutely. But what are your words of wisdom to other young girls? Really, um, you know, everyone has some kind of word that they can find a sense to define themselves. Um, mine would definitely be resilience. Um, that is my favorite word. Um, I for 
get even the first time that I heard it, I didn't even know what it meant. Um, and it was a psychologist who had told me, um, she said, after hearing my story, she said, you are truly resilient. And I've, uh, that word stuck ever since. And so to anyone who would feel ashamed or you know, doesn't feel strong or feels like they can't get through it, just they have to know that they are really strong and they might not know it yet, but they have to find that something that makes them feel that way. Well, I feel so honored that you were comfortable enough to share your story with me today and with Kristen. And you are going so far <laughs> in life, lady. I mean, everybody check this young girl out. She, All of her links are on ChelseaCross.com. She has so many incredible things going on. Thank you so much for being here. And coming up next, Tracy and Charlie are back to teach us how to protect yourself in several situations. You don't want to miss this. Hey everyone, we're back with Tracy and Charlie from Simple Self-Defense for Women and we're going to go through some mute moves of how to defend ourselves in case of an attack. Right. All right, what's our first move? Okay, the first one's not so much an attack as maybe you're out and it's not life-threatening, but maybe you're uncomfortable, you're out of date, you know, or maybe you're with Uncle Bob at the family gathering, you know, it's maybe a little too touchy-feely. So, so let's just say he's putting his arm around you and you're like, you know, take, could you take your arm off of me? I've had enough, you know, stop. So what you're going to do, Chelsea, you're going to imagine Charlie wearing a bra, which right. he's not, but <laughs> right about his seam of his shirt, you're going to take your finger, kind of like a girly fist, and you're going to push through, and you're going to say something, whatever you want to say to him. Back could, off. Right. <laughs> something a little colorful, something just to get him away from you, but it kind of gets the point. Think about the women with nails. I mean, right. that hurts, Exactly. Right? I mean, because I, I was demonstrating it on myself <laughs> earlier, and it's really painful. Yeah, not a big move, but so important because I've been in many situations where I just need to get the person off of me yeah. and I don't know what to do. Yep, and that gets the point across. And it's so simple. Fist, nail, into the bra area <laughs> and push. Right, right. So simple. Yep, that works. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the next one might happen. This is an attempted kidnapping. This is a much more serious situation. Somebody's going to grab you by the arm. It could be a child. It could be a, you know, a boyfriend girlfriend situation. But the most common way that they're going to grab you is by the arm because they want to pull you into a vehicle or pull you into an elevator. So we showed you how to get away earlier. Can right. you just go ahead and, and show them? And then we're going to tell, explain I'm what you did. Step yep. back and yep. away. Now, hopefully what's going to happen when you, we, we showed you, but what happened here is your natural reaction normally is to pull, sure, right? And exactly. you can't get out. So what you're going to do instead is you're fighting just one finger because the way he's holding you, because you're going to bring your arm up through that gap and he can't hold on. So with you, especially being petite, you want to do that and you're going to take a step at the same time with the same leg and turn and you're going to escape. Run the opposite direction. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Hopefully he'll trip and he'll fall because he's not expecting you to go. You've got the element of surprise and on your side. And all of these moves set you up so that you can run in the opposite exactly. direction. Exactly. And then when you're teaching children at home, which we'd like you to do, call this robot. Right. Kids love robot. It's easy for them to remember. It's fun. And when you're teaching them like that, they get it. And people might say what happens if they grab you a different way, if they're Another thumbs down. Move. Right. Same thing. Follow his thumb. And it's down. Yep. And back. Right. right. Very simple. Okay. Now, you're going to go home. We want everybody in the audience to try this, right? Because you want to make sure they know what to do. So I'm going to have Charlie grab you again, but I'm going to give you a little tip here, Chelsea. So when you're going to just, you know, okay. So when Charlie grabs you this time, okay. So you and know he's what? not letting me he's go. Not gonna, right. Right. Okay. Because guys are super macho, right? They don't. I'm so glad somebody else did that. <laughs> because guys are so super macho. When you go home to try this, they're going to go, she's not getting out. So that extra little tap just breaks their concentration. You could give them a little tap on the leg or tap on the belly, too, and that would work. I as could well. totally see my brother going, you are not getting right? out of there this. Right. There you go. There you and go. that little element of surprise will totally catch it's them off. Guard. It's fun. So. And I think that that's a huge factor in simple self defense moves as well. Right. A lot of the attackers are not expecting you to know what to do. To to escape exactly and that's the that's the point of this we want all women to know what to do so they don't have to be at the victim of an attack absolutely now this next one is a little gruesome a little graphic however so important so important so Chelsea we're gonna ask you to lay down on this one so this what would happen here is if, vic if Chelsea was going to be the victim of a sexual assault, her hands would most likely be pinned over her head. So she doesn't have a way to fight. So what we're going to ask her to do is lift one leg up, either leg, shift her weight a little bit, and right in the middle of Charlie's thigh, she's going to push as hard as she can. Right? 
and it throws him. That was great, Charlie. And he, yeah. and he's, he he's totally almost, flipped he over. He totally flipped off because your legs are super strong. And what's happening is Chelsea's just lifting her leg up slightly, setting it right in the middle of his thigh. And Charlie's like a tripod. So as soon as you take the weight off of his hands and his leg, he's got a tip. He's got, he doesn't have it anymore. So he rolls away. And if this is happening outside, we're hoping that he's going to fall and smack his head on something. If it's happening inside, we're hoping that he's going to be hitting his head on the, the you know, the nightstand or right. the, the windowsill. And it's amazing that that leg move is so powerful enough to be able to get you out of that move. Most women have incredibly strong legs anyway. Mm -hmm. It's very powerful and they, they just fly right off because again, they're not expecting it. Right, now you're educating people on simple self-defense moves, but if that freeze or flight thing happens to you and you're, you know, standing there, how do you escape that mentality and, and you know, instead allow yourself to know what to do? Well, that's why we want you to know in advance. We want women to learn these things. We don't teach a lot of moves. We keep it very simple. So there's a few moves that you can learn. You practice them and then you're not going to be freezing up. You may hesitate for a minute like you did on the video clip, right. but then you'll go, I know how to do that. And do, do you advise people to practice? Absolutely. And women have a lot of fun practicing. They do. <laughs> they do. It's, a, it's, it's a good thing to do. And you'll practice it a couple of times. Make sure you know what to do it. Refresh yourself. And I think it's so empowering knowing what to do in a scary situation like this that maybe once you practice a little bit these moves, you know, if that ever happens to you, you'll be more prepared. You'll with be more what prepared. And we give you a couple of different things that you can do when we're talking to people. We give you if the first one doesn't work, maybe it's slipped out of your mind, you go right to the next one and the next one works. So there's multiple ways that you can escape. And how important is being verbal as well as being physical? <laughs> Women are very time. verbal, you know that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Charlie's laughing. <laughs> but that but that's what happens. I mean we you know people will say yell, scream, fight what we don't give you a script. Mm -hmm. We don't want you to have to remember it. Whatever right. you feel comfortable saying, that's what you want to do. And I love learning these moves so much that we're actually going to do a few more moves in web exclusives. So tune in to the website ChelseaCross.com to see more exclusives with Tracy and Charlie. Thank you to all my guests. To find out more about today's show, go to our website. Keep sending me pictures and messages via social media. And be sure to check out the ResumeBear.com quick tip of the week. Next week, don't miss it because we're getting ready for summer with the experts from Self Magazine. Have a great night, everyone.